So I just did something a little bit crazy with a car that doesn't actually stop. I signed up to go racing. That's the car I need. I've got less than a month to get it figured out. Luckily, this shouldn't take that long. We're going to get the brakes figured out on this El Camino because I know that 7.8 bore master cylinder just does not provide the pedal feel I need. That's why I'm holding this Willwood master cylinder. This one has a one inch bore, which should be a lot more suited for the front discs rear drum setup on that car and be able to give me the pedal feel I need to get that car stopped. Yes, I know this master cylinder is hanging off in space, just still attached to the lines. That way it's in the event I need to move the car, I can just bolt it to the firewall and move it around. However, uh, looking at the new Willwood master cylinder compared to the uh, existing one there, this nub is about a quarter inch longer, which means that the push rod needed to go back closer or inboard of the firewall another quarter inch. Now to do that, it wasn't just as cut and dried. I had to pull it out and this little uh, sleeve, I had to turn it down a quarter of an inch to make sure that it was now short enough to be able to push on the uh, piston of the master cylinder and not be like already engaged as it's pushed against the firewall. So. The options were I could grab a piece of quarter inch plate, build a quarter inch adapter and space it out from the firewall, or do everything as it is with that uh, uh, plate and push rod set up. I decided to go the easier route and just take it apart, turn it down, and now I've got something that'll work. Just so that we're all on the same page, this is the Willwood Master 260-8555. This is a one inch bore master cylinder. Now what comes in the box? You've got the instructions, you've got the appropriate parts to bleed it, and it comes with a nice selection of fittings that from everything I can see will match what is on the firewall or what the fittings are that exist on that car already. So uh, what I'm gonna do is Use the supplied plugs because this master cylinder has ports on both sides. Uh, I'm going to plug the uh, inboard side and get the fitting set up on the outboard side. And then I'm going to start bleeding this master cylinder on the bench. Willwood says install the uh, plugs and fittings with the aluminum crush washer with a, a silicone based lubricant and torque them down to 20 to 25 foot pounds. I'm going to torque them down to you know, 20 to 25 foot pounds with yield torque wrench there. Always verify you've got the right fittings in the right place before you put it in. Save yourself a little bit of headache. Always go check the car you're working on so that way you get them right. Now with the master cylinder in a vise with a couple of aluminum soft jaws so I don't you know hurt the material there. Uh, threaded the fittings in, the correct ones. I would recommend threading the fittings in, getting your tube set before you fill it with brake fluid because I went the other way and I was uh, uh, chasing my tail just a little bit trying to get those uh, in before it was leaking everywhere. Don't do what I did, do it right. Fittings first, then brake fluid. Don't ask me why I did it that way, I just did. Now per the instructions, using a blunted instrument, I've got a rubbery handled half of a plier because the center fell out and I don't know where the other half is. Uh, just cycle it slowly, smoothly, all the way in. You're going to get a lot of air bubbles on the first couple of strokes. And it looks like I need to make sure I get my tubes in the juice a little bit better. There we go. Everything's happy there. And let's try that one again, slowly, smoothly. Lots of air bubbles but that's what it's supposed to do. And we'll cycle this a few more times and get this bled. The master cylinder is bled and I almost tried something stupid. I almost tried to put the thing on the firewall by myself. Just not a good idea. Don't be afraid to go ask for help. I'm gonna go get uh, my son, my wife, someone who can give me a hand and hold the outside while I thread the nuts up on the inside from the firewall, from the inside of the firewall. There we go. Let you know when I get done. So the new master cylinder's on, looks a lot better. Uh, and I did all the fiddly stuff. I got the lines hooked up. I lengthened the push rod to match so that everything's happy. Uh, so the brake pedal has as much physical travel as possible. But that doesn't really explain why I was having such a long pedal with the previous master cylinder. I've got it set up on the bench. Let's see which port fires first, because the back port is supposed to fire the front brakes and the front port is supposed to fire the back brakes. Now, ideally, the drum brakes are supposed to flow a little bit before the disc brakes. So rears fire just a little bit before the fronts. Let's go see how much travel 
the other one's got? Let's find out. Looks like the front port fires first. By a pretty significant margin, if I had to say so. I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, and there it... Whoa. It was literally, you know, a thumb width before the front, the front brakes started to fire. So given what we just saw, it's no wonder I was having such a long pedal before it was actually stopping the car. It was probably more than three-eighths of an inch before the uh, front brake port or the uh, disc brake port, the back one, was flowing to get fluid out to the brakes. I'm surprised this even worked from the factory or if this is a faulty master cylinder. I don't know. Either way, I've got what I suspect to be a much better choice on the car now. Now I'm going to go bleed the brakes. I'll check in with you when I'm done. I just wanted to say one more thing before I even touch bleeding the brakes. I've stepped on the brake pedal and it's already higher and harder and more stiff like it's supposed to. And I haven't even bled the air out of the system yet. I think this is where I need to be. I'm going to get bleeding. So the brakes on the El Camino are bled. And I made this very weird, unique tool. It's an inexpensive, I got it from Home Depot, 5 sixteenths, six point deep socket, uh, hot metal glue gunned to a Harbor Freight offset wrench. This is so that way I can put this on the bleeder screw and run the tube to the bleeder bottle up the middle of it because the ID works out okay. And I'm able to operate it nicely, effectively. Yes, a 5 uh offset wrench works too. But the problem is I've bled the brakes on this car so many times, my bleeder screws are getting a little questionable on the corners. So the six point is the much better choice for that. So I'm gonna get the car off of the jack stands and let's go for a test drive. All right, first test drive. I got my son Riker with me. We just went out, basically bedded the pads and stuff in. Everything feels so much better with that one inch pour master. And I can, in fact, lock up the fronts. So I've got all the braking power that I finally need that this car deserves. So I call this a win. Let's go back and make sure everything's holding pressure the way it's supposed to. So I decided to get really sunny out, which isn't so bad, but I've been uh, under the hood looking at all of my fittings, making sure there's no leaks. I've taken a peek at the back end just to make sure that all the fittings there are tight. Uh, so far, no fluid leaks. The brakes feel far better than they ever did with the uh, other master cylinder. And I'm comfortable running this thing now. I can hold it at 2000 RPM for stalling it up at launch on the track. This is ready to rock. Stay tuned. We're going to have this thing on the track real soon.